So it's, it's really a, it's a spectacular uh, piece of engineering. Extremely difficult <laughs> to make and, and succeed. This is, the engine has been mind-bogglingly difficult, uh, but it is, I mean, it is, it is essential, obviously, to, to making uh, Starship work. This is definitely the reason SpaceX must continuously switch over from the version of Raptor that was used on Starhopper. SN5, SN6, SN8, SN9, SN10, and SN11. Raptor version 1.0 and the version of Raptor used on SN15, S20, and B4. Raptor version 1.5 into the next generation of Raptor, Raptor 2. The new version has definitely a large number of performance and reliability improvements that's totally thrilling scientists' minds. What are those insane upgrades? Why is it so special? And why does it blow your mind? And why exactly did SpaceX change on Raptor 2? And why are these changes advantageous to Starship? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. While Raptor 1 has been refined over the years, it's now an old design. Its construction is complex, difficult to manufacture, and has long turnarounds between launches. It also has hit a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, meaning it will struggle to reach Elon Musk's demand for a Mars-bound Starship. SpaceX's solution is Raptor 2, an engine capable of taking us to Mars and beyond. This isn't just an updated Raptor 1, but an entirely new design from the ground up that can outstrip its predecessor in every measurable metric. But first, let's look at similarities. SpaceX cast Raptor engine parts from super steel alloys. Inconel is a family of austenitic nickel-chromium-based superalloys. Inconel alloys are heat and oxidation-resistant materials. Inconel has been used for over 60 years in rockets and space planes. The skin of the X-15 rocket-powered aircraft was made out of Inconel 10. The X-15 first flew in 1959. Inconel X-750 was used for the thrust chamber of the F-1 rocket engine used in the first stage of the Saturn V. The space shuttle used four Inconel studs to secure the solid rocket boosters to the launch platform. Eight total studs supported the entire weight of the ready-to-fly shuttle system. SpaceX has used Inconel in the engine manifold of their Merlin rocket engine and the Falcon 9 and the SpaceX Super Draco rocket engine for the Dragon V2. There's no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing, however, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale, the high cost, and the low manufacturing rate. Raptor 1s use methane and liquid oxygen fuel, making it one of the cleanest burning rockets available. Thanks to these high thrust engines, precise throttle, and gimbal ability, SpaceX has pioneered self-landing rockets. Raptor 2, still methane liquid oxygen engine. But that's where the similarities end. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 1 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by somewhere around six tons. It's a clear example of Musk, the best part is no part mantra. Another change made to Raptor 2 to further decrease the engine's mass is removal of the torch igniters in the main combustion chamber. Instead of relying on redundant torch igniters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot CH4 gas act hypergolic under the high temperature and pressure of the main combustion chamber, or MCC. Raptor 2s are also welded together, effectively reducing the number of components that are needed. This makes the engines more compact, lighter, and easier to manufacture than the Raptor 1, which uses flanges to literally bolt the engine together. Raptor 2 also has fewer flanges than the original versions of Raptor. Flanges are great during prototyping when parts have to be swapped out, but they increase mass and increase pressure loss throughout the engine. 
Now that the design is more stable, SpaceX has been able to remove many flanges on the engine, going as far as hoping to remove all flanges on Raptor 2.5, which will further increase thrust to 250 tons and debut on Booster 12. Finally, the Raptor 2's pre-burner controls are no longer spread all over the engine like on a Raptor 1. Instead, they're in their own box. This simplification makes manufacturing easier and means the shroud could be removed, allowing for more movement in gimbling engines. So what do all these changes add up to? Well, the Raptor 2 has already produced 247 tons of thrust during static test, and engineers are confident they'll hit 250 very soon. That's a 35% increase in thrust from a smaller, lighter engine. This will allow any Raptor 2-equipped rocket to have dramatically increased payload. But it just doesn't stop there. Thanks to Raptor 2's simplicity, it can be relaunched within an hour compared to Raptor 1, which required several weeks between launches. This simplicity also means that the Raptor 2 cost half as much to manufacture as the Raptor 1. To say this engine is groundbreaking, it's an understatement. The impact of Raptor 2 will be immense. Let's look at Elon Musk's ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. Thanks to Raptor 2's quick turnaround, a small fleet of Raptor 2-equipped starships could launch several times a week. This means SpaceX could launch more payloads into space in one year than the U.S. has done in its entire history. The dramatic increase in annual payload capacity is what will enable SpaceX to colonize Mars. Musk estimates a total of 1 million tons of payload will be needed to set up a self-sustaining Mars colony. In theory, Raptor 2-equipped starships could deliver this much to Mars in just 10 years with about 20 launches a week. That means it may only take approximately 1,000 or so Raptor 2-equipped starships working full-time for a decade to colonize Mars. As you can imagine, this will cost an awful lot, but that's where the Raptor 2 really shines. A Raptor 2-equipped starship is estimated to cost only $2 million per launch. Compare that to NASA's SLS, which is around 15% smaller payload and cost around $1.55 billion to over $2 billion per launch. For some perspective, Musk's hypothetical 10-year Mars colonization project would cost $2.08 billion a year, which is the cost of one SLS launch. Or to put it another way, Starship is 1,040 times less than the SLS. Just a reminder that the SLS is no slouch. It is a cutting-edge rocket designed by the very best at NASA. It's just that Starship and its Raptor 2 engine is just in another league. Starship could really unlock the moon, Mars, and the asteroid belt for further human exploration and colonization. With such an impressive payload, low launch cost, and quick turnaround, Starship could also significantly impact the Earth. As the Raptor 2 can run off carbon-neutral biofuel, Starship could, in theory, be the world's first net-zero rocket. Combine that with the impressive landing ability and LEO, or Low Earth Orbit, payload of over 150 tons, and you have a possible replacement for commercial jet planes. It would take Starship 29 minutes to go from London to New York, and only double that of a regular first-class ticket per passenger. This service would be impractical with Raptor 1's long turnaround times. But a Raptor 2-equipped Starship fleet could easily shuttle passengers to and from without massive delay. So thanks to the Raptor 2, SpaceX could revolutionize aviation as well. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's comments and support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.